Usually, when Meta shows off prototypes, they try and demonstrate what's possible in the future. But what we have here is something entirely different. A few days ago, Meta's director of displays, Douglas Landman, released this. A headset that will be viable competition for the Apple Vision Pro. A combination of all the technology from earlier prototypes like light field displays, ferrofocal panels and holographic pancake lenses. But most importantly, whilst breaking down the near two hour talk from Douglas, this is something that can be made today from parts at a consumer level cost. And so in this video, we will break down everything and I'll show you why this will destroy the Apple Vision Pro. Now this is going to be a meaty video. The talk by Douglas was incredibly interesting and it really gives a fantastic insight into what the future of VR holds. He also did a fantastic job at explaining the different kinds of technology we will soon see in our headsets. Then at the end, he concludes what technology can be condensed into a product with off the shelf parts available today. And that of course is the Mirror Lake prototype, AKA what I believe is the Quest Pro 2. I'll leave timestamps in the description, but the first part we'll go over is the individual pieces of technology that will soon be in our headsets. And then we'll take a deep look at what the Quest Pro 2 or the Mirror Lake will become. Now, as per what Boz says in his most recent AMA, prototypes turn into products. The prototypes that make the most sense in terms of features and cost are the ones that make it into production. The reason why this is important in regards to the Mirror Lake is because of one simple reason the Apple Vision Pro. Boz has also spoke about this, that the Vision Pro has altered the trajectory of Meta's lineup, and they are really the only company that can give Apple a run for its money in the mixed reality space. Douglas starts his talk by talking about passing the visual Turing test, a test to trick the eyes into thinking what they're looking at is in fact reality. But in order to pass this test, we must first look at the limitations of our current VR devices, and those are as follows. Current headsets are too heavy. The social aspects of wearing a headset is too odd. The pass through is not clear enough and the resolution needs to be near retinal displays. The field of view also needs to be about 220 degrees. The color gambit needs to be higher and mixed reality must have near perfect occlusion. All of those sound like a big ask and the technology sounds years away, but this is not true. What Meta has been working on over the past nine years is solutions to these problems. And without giving away too much till the end, all of these problems have essentially been solved. And that starts with this, the hollow cake lens. The current headsets like the Quest 3 use pancake lenses, which is the next generation from Fresnel. Each new generation of optics has a smaller form factor. The reasons the Quest 3 is smaller than the Quest 2 is because of these new lenses. But that technology goes even further. The Holocake 2 prototype is a headset with a holographic pancake lens design and it's both the thinnest lens and provides the widest color gambit using LCD panels. And it also has a new type of eye tracking display where the eye tracking cameras are behind the lens and this reduces the amount of cameras actually needed for eye tracking as they have a better view of your eyes. The design also allows for some insane form factor and has led for the Meta team to develop a successful working pair of VR glasses just to give you an idea of how thin they actually are. So form factor is now solved. So on to resolution. In terms of resolution, compared to the human eye, VR today sits roughly at 2040 vision. So half as good as what the average human can see, 20 to 30 pixels per degree. And what we need to be at is 60 pixels per degree for this to be retinal resolution. With off the shelf components, retinal displays are possible, but at a lower field of view. And that was the prototype Butterscotch, a ultra high resolution VR headset. But there are still missing components. Ferrofocal technology has been nine years in the making. It started with the mechanical ferrofocal optics with the Half Dome prototype. By Half Dome 3, they'd essentially invented a new ferrofocal lens technology that has no moving parts but uses an electrical current to activate different layers of the lens, which in turn moves the focal plane backwards and forwards to simulate focus. And the conclusion of this technology was incorporating ferrofocal technology made VR experiences seem more natural, with better reading ability, less motion sickness, and an overall more comfortable experience. And another element for a more natural, comfortable vision system is light. High dynamic range is the gold standard for VR, but it's incredibly difficult to pull off because of one simple reason, heat. 
current VR displays output roughly 100 nits, and for comparison, your TV is roughly 400. The brightness inside your headset is at the lower end of the spectrum, but it is something we've gotten used to. But that's what makes this prototype super impressive. The Starburst outputs 20,000 nits and is a true HDR display. It really takes it to the extreme when it comes to displays. But with more accurate lighting, users reported an almost 3D effect of flat displays. But we don't need that much range. Heat displacement wouldn't allow it in a portable VR headset. And really, we want to be hitting around 600 nits for outdoor scenes and 300 nits for indoor. And I believe this is a realistic goal compared to the insane 20,000 nits of the Starburst headset. Now this brings us to the two most important things when it comes to more recent VR headsets, especially what would be considered a Quest Pro 2, and that's social presence and pass-through. The reason we get distortion in our current VR headsets is because the pass-through cameras have to simulate where we see from. There is missing visual data, so distortion is actually intentional so you don't just see a void. This is real-time AI pass-through, a more accurate representation with little to no distortion. And this led to this, the Flamera prototype, which this honeycomb looking design is actually a perspective correct camera. So no distortion at all. The social aspect of things is also important to keep the connection to the real world around us. And this is what we have seen from earlier prototypes from Meta, but reverse pass-through has really gained credibility with a Vision Pro, and this feature will almost certainly be inside a Quest Pro 2. And that brings us nicely to the Mirror Lake prototype, a combination of most of this technology we just talked about. But before I break into this headset and what it offers, I just want to talk about today's sponsor. CatVR have been providing solutions for VR locomotion for a number of years now, and they are the clear industry standard when it comes to VR treadmills. But just recently, they have had some groundbreaking innovations with their Quest standalone device, the Cat Nexus. The Nexus allows you to use your catwalk with just a standalone Quest, no PC required. And thanks to the team at CatVR, you can now play over 100 standalone VR titles. These include brand new games such as Assassin's Creed, The Walking Dead, Bone Lab, and loads more. They also have an incredible Christmas promotion going on with the Catwalk C2 Plus and the Catwalk C2 Core with Vehicle Hub for as low as $8.99, which is by far the cheapest VR treadmill you can buy today. So if you'd like to check them out, links are in the description. Now, the Vision Pro has impacted the VR market by giving credibility to new products. They essentially create entire markets just by being Apple. Meta has clearly put in the work perfecting VR technology, and the Mirror Lake prototype is a result of all that work we just talked about. This headset includes the holographic pancake design, with integrated eye tracking, retinal displays, and reverse pass-through, and it's completely possible with off-the-shelf parts today. But I really want to make one thing clear. They are still aiming this for a more work-orientated environment. The reverse pass-through is seen to most current VR users as a gimmick, but most of us are not the target audience. Much like the Vision Pro, this is going to be used for most of the day, and you'll need some sort of connection to the outside world to give the ability to interact with both digital avatars and physical people. And studies done by Meta show reverse pass-through is the way to go. The prototype also doesn't feature a battery or give any information in regards to processing power. Douglas did mention a puck that you can plug into the headset much like the Vision Pro, and I believe the reason for this would be an all-day weight management to keep things as light as possible. But touching on processing power slightly, this will need to be a fully functional PC much like the Vision Pro will be. Meta's connection to Microsoft might make this slightly easier, but this will need to be an incredibly powerful headset, unlike the incremental increase of the Quest Pro. One thing is for sure, with the Vision Pro coming in January and for a huge price tag, Meta suddenly has the freedom to make a better and cheaper product with the Quest Pro 2. With the elements from each of these prototypes, they have potential to create something truly special. And the only two questions left is how much would it cost and what features would a commercial product include? Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed today's video, like and subscribe if you did, and as always, I'll catch you on the next one.